Wait a minute, now it's recording? Son of a bitch. Hello, welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where I like to talk about stuff and occasionally even things. I'm a good friend Bradley, and today is a pleasant Sunday smoke, take two. I recorded a nice 20 minute long Sunday smoke and actually did not press record and only found out when I was turning off the camera. So here we go. Um, I always speak extemporaneously on these Sunday smokes. I'm just putting on my timer here. Yeah, I had 20 minutes and 35 seconds for the last Sunday smoke, which you will never see. And now we are trying again. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna remember the things that I said in the last one and I'm not even gonna try to recreate it, but I still have the things written down about which I was going to speak. So let's try to get through this. I see that red dot, it is recording. God damn it. All right, so first of all, the bidness. We'll get this taken care of. We have been posting lots of reviews lately, maybe a little too many. I've been feeling like it's getting a little review heavy, but I just had so many things sent to me and just had a big backlog of things that I needed to get to. And so I've been slowly trying to get through all those things. So last week I posted the review for the Coda leather journal covers or notebook covers. I think these are pretty cool. I like these quite a bit. So you should check out that review if you wish, if you're interested in these at all. I think they are of fine quality and I like them. I also just posted my review of this, the Gun Deck leather wallet. This is a pretty interesting wallet here. I like the design. I really like the leather. This is this really cool Batero veg tanned leather made by a tannery in Italy, I believe. And this was actually sent to me by a guy, Michael Bluth, good name, who is active duty Navy, but also has this leather workshop where he makes leathers and totes, or leathers, wallets and totes and things like that. Um, so I was pretty impressed with this wallet. I posted the review on Saturday, yesterday, as you're watching this. So you should check that out as well. Of course, still posting videos on the Stuff and Things Plays channel. I actually just got a new game for the old Nintendo Switch. It is, uh, let's see here. Turn it on. Look, well, you can't see this. Hey, there it is. It's Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Um, really cool game. I'm gonna post a few gameplay videos of this. Um, not a ton because, you know, it's a racing game, so there's not like there's a story to go through or anything, but I loved Mario Kart 64, the original, well, not the original, the second Mario Kart that was on the Nintendo 64. My friends and I back in the day played that religiously. We never stopped. My friend Jeff, um, their family had this detached shop and they had a big screen TV, which was a rarity back then. And it was pretty cool, pretty exciting. We would spend hours and hours there playing battle mode on the N64 Mario Kart. And that was the last main Mario Kart I ever played. I've done some of the handheld versions and stuff, but uh, it's pretty cool to have a large full featured Mario Kart game on a system this size that you can take with you anywhere. So I'll be posting some videos on that. Some other things coming up in the future. I have this from Popov Leather. This is an update of a wallet that I've already reviewed on the channel. A little sticker. This is a thinner version of their Chrome XL wallet that I already reviewed. I will be posting this, not this coming week, but the week after. And after that, we'll take a little break from the reviews. I wanna to try to get out and about a little bit more. Again, it's raining like a mofo outside this weekend. The week was actually kind of nice. It was getting kind of sunny, sort of spring-like, but every weekend it just seems without fail, it rains like crazy. But I'm hoping in the future to get out and about. I would like to get to uh, maybe Glacier National Park. Um, there are some really, really beautiful wild places in Washington State, and uh, I would like to visit some of them. There's Baker Snoqualmie National Forest. There's places in the Olympic Peninsula. Um, I was actually looking there's this cool sort of heat map that, I don't know if it was the Forest Service or like the Survey Corps or something in the US did this map where they basically show all these points that are 
they do it like based on color gradation. So the darker green an area is on the map, the further away it is from a road. And so you can sort of see where the wild areas are in the contiguous United States. I don't think they did Alaska, but uh, there weren't many, you know, on the East Coast, but like Northern Minnesota, places around the Rockies, some places in Colorado, and a bunch in Washington state. So there are some still real wild, pristine areas and I would like to get out and experience some of them this spring and summer and maybe bring you guys with me. So we'll see. Don't hold me to that. It's tough for me to get time off to actually make a real trip out of it, but uh, we'll see. We'll try to get some big trees, some wild aminals, aminimals, and uh, that'd be fun. Other things that we're gonna be doing on the channel, um, we will always continue to do tobacco reviews, obviously, and the next tobacco review um, is this. Cornell and Deals Bayou Morning. You saw my first impressions video that I posted on last week's Sunday Smoke, but I just recorded, I think I did, I didn't check. Oh man. Hopefully I recorded the review for Cornell and Deals Bayou Morning, a very spicy, very peppery vapor. Um, so that will post hopefully this week on Wednesday. Uh, I guess if I didn't do it, I'll have to do it again. Just look for the red dot, you doofus. The red dot is still blinking at me, so I think we're good right now. And then the next tobacco, pap tobacco, on deck is GLP's Telegraph Hill. Yes, another vapor. We're still continuing on with that sort of series, sort of series, that series that is sort of about trying to replace Dunhill's Elizabethan um, so we've been doing a lot of vapors lately. I might have to mix it up a little bit because even I'm getting kind of tired of only smoking vapors all the time. So we'll see. But this is the next one in the queue, Telegraph Hill. Um, and I think that covers most the business. Again, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Guys and girls, women, men, all of the kinds of creatures that might watch YouTube. I appreciate you watching, especially subscribing to the Stuff and Things Plays channel. We need your help. We're not getting enough views on that. It's making me sad. And let's see. I've got other things written down here. Oh, 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 one other last little piece of business. Uh, Grant from Lumos Leather. I reviewed some Lumos Leather products a ways back and he had written me a little missive mentioning that he has sort of a side project. It's a website called TubeRater, TubeRater.com. And he suggested that you, my viewers, might like to rate the Stuff and Things channel or the Stuff and Things Plays channel on TubeRater.com. It's a website that rates YouTube channels. I think pretty self-explanatory. And because it's kind of new, a lot of the really popular entrenched YouTube channels don't have a ton of ratings yet. So it's a good opportunity for a newer channel like mine or a smaller channel like mine to uh, get some ratings. So also you guys could throw him some traffic on his website. So if you want to check it out, I will try to remember to put a link in the description box below, tubeRater.com. But now, things that I wrote down here. I had a little run-in with a homeless man the other day. Um, we've spoken a lot about the homeless issues that Bellingham, Washington faces. It is a place that is very attractive to homeless people because it has tons of services and they keep expanding these services. They're adding 200 more beds. They have evicted some businesses on the waterfront and they're going to convert these warehouses to more beds for homeless people. There was actually an article in the local newspaper um, and our mayor is basically just saying, she actually didn't give any good reason for this. Um, as I mentioned in, in the last video where we spoke about the homeless issue in Bellingham, it's not as though there's this huge population of homeless people here we just provide all these services and then they come here. Um, and as I mentioned, you know, I'm all for trying to help people that need help, but my neighborhood has declined a horrible, tremendous amount since they have expanded these services and more and more homeless people have come from other regions of the country and of the state. And recently I, I had a nice, there was a nice day. It was after work and it was a sunny day and I had a cigar and a cup of coffee and I wanted to go outside and enjoy it. And we have this back kind of yard garden area and we used to have benches there and things, places where you could sit, but we had to rip them all out because they were constantly just occupied by sleeping homeless people. People were camping back there. And so they ripped all the benches out. They put no trespassing signs everywhere because the cops said you need to post all over that there's no loitering, no trespassing, residents only, whatever. 
And so I went out there and there's still these sort of ecology blocks that are kind of keeping up this embankment and I can still sit there. And so I was gonna go out there and on one of the ecology blocks, there were two homeless men sitting and talking. And I was like, fine, I'm not gonna say anything even though there are no trespassing signs all over. It's like, I just wanna have my cigar, have my coffee, relax. But as I sort of situated myself and started smoking, their very loud conversations started coming back to me. And it basically involved how one of them had to register as a sex offender because he kept exposing his genitals to young children. And so there's a very loud, animated, rather obnoxious discussion about this. And I just thought, you know what? I don't have to put up with this. This is, this is my place. This is my home. I pay rent to be able to use this backyard area and to recreate and enjoy myself. There's no trespassing here. There are signs, it's posted. I don't have to put up with this. And so I very politely said, hey, you know what guys? I don't know if you notice or not, but this isn't actually a park. This belongs to this building here. There are no trespassing signs. It's supposed to be for residents only. There's actually a park just down the street, just like a block away, actually two blocks away, where you guys could go if you wish. And my God, did they freak out. One of them did. Uh, the other guy was sort of trying to talk the guy, his friend down a little bit. I think he was just worried about causing trouble or having some sort of issue develop the cops or something. But this guy just went ballistic, foaming at the mouth, freaking out. And I always maintain my calm in those situations. I can get curt, um, but I never, I usually don't raise my voice, usually don't get into any hist histrionics or anything, but I was just very firmly, it was like, no, you need to go, especially now you need to go. And he just went absolutely insane, screaming, yelling, threatening. Um, and it was funny though, because then they did leave, but the entire way, like other homeless people round and about, he would have to go and loudly yell and tell them what I had done, the effrontery of me to make them leave this private property. And I was just sitting there like smoking my cigar, like waving as they would point me out. So things have not improved. Um, we'll see. There, there are some things, maybe some gears wind in here. Um, there are other people, other property owners, business owners, residents of this neighborhood who I think are getting kind of fed up with the lack of any sort of plan going on here as to how to deal with all these homeless people just kind of all over the neighborhood. So we'll see. Um, another thing that I was gonna talk about today, I go to a grocery store. Um, my grocery store. I went there yesterday and it's my favorite store. It's Fred Meyer and it's sort of regional, I think. I think it's only in the Pacific Northwest. I think it's Washington, Oregon, I think only those two states, but it's kind of like um, sort of a better Walmart. It has everything. You can go there and shop for groceries and they actually have really nice fresh produce and meats and things like that in a deli, but then you can also buy a pair of underwear. Um, or I don't know, an ottoman, or a bedside table, or some oil for your car, or an air filter, or a fishing rod, or a basketball, like anything you could imagine, electronics, televisions, everything. They've got it all, and I love that store. I go there all the time. Um, and I was there the other day, and whenever I go shopping, I always use the automatic teller. And I don't know how widespread this is in the world. It's very widespread in the US, probably in Europe, I would assume as well. Um, but it's basically, you can go up, there are no cashiers, there are just these stations. You go, you scan your items, you put them on this little weighted thing. So when you scan it, it knows how much each item weighs and then you place it on this bagging area. And so it knows, okay, he has scanned it and he has placed it there. Like you're not just putting things there that haven't been scanned, whatever. Then you pay with your credit card or with cash and then you mosey on away. And it's very quick, very convenient. You don't have to wait in line for a cashier. So I always do that. Um, but recently they have changed the software in the, uh, the automated teller machines before it was, it was kind of fiddly. Like occasionally you would put something in the bagging area and it wouldn't register. And you know, there are a few issues here and there, but mostly pretty smooth. And they always have a person 
working there um, to sort of help you if there are any problems, like, or if you're buying liquor or something and they have to make sure that you're actually 21 and, you know, whatever. But it went pretty smoothly. But now they've updated the software and they have made it insufferably annoying. So now there's this computerized voice that just won't shut the hell up no matter what you're doing. Every item you scan, it very loudly tells you the price. So let's say I'm scanning this Bic lighter. It'll be $1.89. And then immediately, before you have any sort of chance to do anything, you'll scan it and then it'll say, place the item in the bagging area. 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 And it is so irritating it drives me absolutely insane. And so I was there yesterday um, scanning my items and I, you have to use these cloth grocery bags because you're not allowed to have plastic bags anymore. Um, you have to bring your own bags from home and they sort of flop over. And so often when you scan the item, you have to kind of get it unflopped. Sometimes you have to pick the bag up off to sort of fit the item in. And of course, once you've picked the bag up, it says, place the item back in the bagging area. Place the item back in the bagging area. Please place the item in the bagging area. And it's just, so freaking obnoxious. And I started getting really angry at this machine, knowing full well that it is an inanimate object. It has no consciousness of its own. It doesn't feel any animosity towards me. It doesn't feel anything at all. It's just a machine. But I started actually like talking back and arguing with the thing and making little comments and getting annoyed. And it was funny because the, the woman who was sort of watching the area was chuckling to herself because she could see me getting so irritated. But it just sort of, there, there are so many things that I do throughout my day that are based upon interacting with machines. And it's very common. And I like technology. I make use of technology a lot. I built my own computer. I use a smartphone, all that stuff. I do a lot of editing and everything. I'm very comfortable with technology. But that sort of was a little, I, I won't say a wake-up call or anything, but it just sort of reminded me that we have to be a little careful if we're going to go whole hog into this idea that machines are going to be sort of running everything, if we're going to automate everything, we're going to have to deal with a lot of place your item in the bagging area, place your item in the bagging area. And I don't know if we want that. I'm not sure if that's something that's a good thing. The people are talking about self-driving cars. I can only imagine how irritated I would get if I'm in a self-driving car and it's not gonna do exactly what I want it to do. There's no way it will. And the first time it runs through a crosswalk filled with people and murders them all, we're gonna have to think really hard about whether or not this is the future we want. Because we spend a lot of time interacting with things that have no feeling, no emotion, no consciousness, and uh, Maybe we need to step back a little bit from that. I could spend whole days, well, maybe not consecutive days, but I might go through an entire day without really interacting with another human being. So uh, yeah, that just kind of gave me pause a little bit as I was arguing with this automatic teller machine. Um, maybe we should be a little careful as you watch this through your computer or through your smartphone. Um, anyway, I don't know what else I talked about in the Lost Sunday Smoke. I think I touch most of the major issues that I meant to touch. I'm sure there are going to be things that I remember. I'm probably muffling my microphone now. Um, but uh, I'm going to cut it off because I've gone another 17 minutes. So now I've, in total, I've been almost 40 minutes trying to record the Sunday Smoke. And I need to get it edited. I need to make some dinner. It's already 7.30. I'm a hungry man. So thank you guys so much for watching this week's edition of Sunday Smoke. I've been your good friend Bradley. You've been the audience. This has been Stuff and Things on a pleasant-ish Sunday Smoke. I'll see you later. Place your item in the bagging area. 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 <laughs>